coming up in this video. I feel like a sellout because of a kitchen appliance. We're sharing a slice of small town life in Alaska. And we face a tough decision about fixing our heater. $982. All right. I'm Ben, this is Rebecca. We're leaving Alaska to drive our 4x4 expedition vehicle around the world. Between honoring our dogs through their golden years and then COVID, this is our third attempt at leaving the country. Join us as we prepare for the first leg of our journey, traversing the subarctic winter conditions of Alaska and Canada. Well, next up on the list is something that we're gonna experiment with. Some may say, oh, that's like a poser thing to do, or that's cheating, or that's not roughing it. But we have spent over, I don't know, 15, 18 months camping, living in this vehicle. Not like three weeks here, four weeks there. Long, real life periods of time. And we're gonna make an experiment and see if we can make a little microwave oven fit down here below our stove. So if you're wondering why the heck would we want a microwave? Well, reality is a lot of our leftovers go to waste because it's difficult to reheat things on a stove top. Instant pot, everything has its place but I know that we waste a lot of money and a lot of food by having leftovers from a meal, putting it in the fridge, and just not having a way to reheat it quickly. And that's where I really think this little 1,050 watt microwave that we had, you know, we had it already, like our uh, Airbnb rooms downstairs in our house, I just kind of robbed it from there. It's a, well, oh wait, no, it's 700 watts. Wow, the back said 1,050. Okay, well even better. But it is a small unit and I'm not looking to make Thanksgiving dinner in this thing. I just want to be able to zap some leftovers, heat them up, eat them, waste less and save money. Now I've taken rough measurements of this space and of this microwave, but the main thing is when I say, will it fit? Because there are certain things that work really, really well in this camper. And this produce basket right here is absolutely amazing. It's a very critical part. But if you look here, let me adjust the camera a little. There's room there and there's some holes there. Now I've already taken the measurements, so I know it will not fit with the way it sits now and I'm gonna have to drop it down a hole, but this could be very, very helpful to make, I don't know, life on the road a little bit easier and a little less wasteful. I really hope it's as easy as just pulling this out, moving it down one hole. Well, I can already see good news that these brackets are below the level of this basket. That's good, for sure. Can't get rid of the basket. Okay, let's do the test fit. Okay. That works. And, moment of truth. Yeah, look at that. Okay, that fits. I do see one thing, and this is the exhaust for our uh, diesel cooktop here. So I actually could probably shorten that pipe up and snug it a little further to make sure that it does not come in contact with that exhaust, but yeah, this is going to work. What? If I make a little snack, are you a bit hungry? Sure. Yeah, some carrots or, yeah. Totally, thanks. 
Okay, if you're wondering what the temperature is today, well, outside it's single digits with wind chill, but here inside the camper, the thermostat just says low. I do not have every tool in the world, but I'm pretty confident this bit will do the job to drill a hole over here so the microwave can be plugged into the inverter there. Um, that, that wasn't quite planned. That plywood just kind of all splintered out. I'll, I'll take care of that. Let's see here. I could probably just get a box knife and shave some extra room. Okay. I'll be able to make it fit, but damn. That kind of sucks. You know, in some ways, it's good that this is just a DIY camper box because I'm not like horribly upset that this kind of splintered away. It's also going to be well covered up by the cushions. And okay, a little bit. There we go. I got it. I discovered another little challenges i need to keep the microwave in place to some degree and this is just a molding that i had from a house project but it's going to keep it from sliding back because over here on this end is that exhaust for the stove and i do not need it hitting that i also do not need it sliding forward I also do not need it sliding around too much this direction as well. There we go. Well, it fits well right here. Just a little bit of wiggle room there. It's pretty snug. And ideally the wall will keep it secure on this side. All right, things are boxed in a little bit here. Now the moment of truth, let's see what happens. Drop the microwave on the camera, Ben. Go on in there. Get it justified to the left. In. Oh, hey. Wow. Look at that. Let me feel back here. Are we going to have any exhaust issues? No. I don't think we're going to have any exhaust issues there. It can't go back to uh, even come in contact with it. I'm not totally convinced about this bracket here. Yes, it protects the cords, but I think it also gives you that space that's required for this part of the microwave, which is going to be boxed in. And this is about a finger width away from the exhaust for the stove and it's just a little closer than i want so i'm going to lop some of this off oh yeah we are working with precision here nothing but professionalism okay pulling the cord on through it plugs right into the power strip there I guess this is also the moment of truth. We'll click on the inverter. Come over here. Oh, I heard the microwave. Let's do, I don't know. Well, no, we don't need five minutes, but hey, there it is, it works. Nice. And now for a little reference. Victron app batteries are at let's see here 99% currently drawing minus two amps let's click this microwave on and minus 113 minus 114 hey we have a 2000 watt inverter so this is actually within the realm 
of our device. I'll stop it. Amps drop back down to the two range. This will reheat leftovers. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, I've been the one pushing for the microwave because we have this ongoing joke. Wow. Oh, you know what we could do if we had a microwave? This. Uh -huh. Oh, if we had a microwave, we could do that. That's actually pretty fantastic. Yeah. Now, where'd you put my pots and pans? Well, we'll figure that one out later. <laughs> but Famous last words. Yeah, but there's space. Like, <clears throat> look at all the space down in there. Yeah, look at like, all the space on the kitchen table. Well, We're fine. yeah, <laughs> we can get rid of more stuff. That's what version 5.0 is. Just get rid of more, more and more things. stuff. Okay. All right. Well, I like the way it looks. Good. Well, I guess that's the seal of approval, unless we don't have room for the instant pot and the skillet and saucepan and all those types of things. Okay, as a finishing touch, I just, for now, put some duct tape around that hole to get all the sharp edges. And it really, seriously, does not matter all that much because this, there it is. That's everything the way it sits normally. Okay, one final look now that I have Rebecca's seal of approval. I got lucky. All I had to do was uh, loosen up that hose clamp and I could slide it up an inch. And it may look like it's coming in contact there, but I can fit my finger under it. And what does come in contact would be this uh, protective woven uh, heat material. I think we're good. And this hopefully, well, like I said, save us money and make us a little less wasteful. Something else we've been doing every day this fall is either swimming or going for a walk. And the pool has been closed because of COVID. So for the last like four weeks now, it's been a walk every day up the hills in our neighborhood. I love our little neighborhood in Seward. This street is so quiet. It's a through street, but it's a circle street. So unless you live here or are visiting somebody here, it has such little traffic. And there's only one street for that matter that has traffic in our neighborhood uh, but we can easily avoid that on our walks but it's just like close enough to town for convenience but far enough away for peace and quiet we made it pretty much as high as we can walk without hiking up the mountain <laughs> and the views are amazing from our neighborhood this is actually at the very top the senior home that they have here in seward called Mountain Haven. I think it's great that they have like the best views in town. Circling back around, this is a little pathway between the elementary school and the junior high. Even the schools in our town have wicked views. That's Mount Alice over there. And we are in bear country. I don't feel like lugging around a pistol, so we always make sure to have bear spray on our walks. Now you've pretty much seen our daily walk routine, and it's time to get back to work. Well, if you want to talk about good times to work on things and bad times to work on things, I wouldn't call now a good time. Uh, it's about five degrees with wind chill and the SPAR, which is the diesel hydronic heater in our truck here, went out on us on our last trip on the Alaska Highway, the coolant pump, so it's just not circulating. I need to get a production number off of the case because I'm thinking of just ordering a whole new unit because we have had nothing but problems with this unit. So yeah, it's a nice brisk day, but yeah, let's get started turning a wrench. Give yourself something to sit on. Hi, Dan. Hello. So here's the deal. The S-Bar unit is tucked right in there above the rear differential. The hardest part about working in these conditions has to be wearing gloves. It's kind of difficult. So the cover is off of the unit. And over there, there's a, uh, some production numbers that I need. 
All right, that's about all I'm gonna do for now because I was able to get the number that I need and I have to order parts and it's gonna get warmer in a couple days. Warmer. Oh yeah, this is Dan. <laughs> you might recognize him from a few of our videos, uh, the Battleborn install. They uh, flew up to Alaska and are looking at buying property. Yep. Awesome. Yep. We finally get that Alaska license plate that we've been wanting. <laughs> And it's up. <laughs> it's a great place to be from. We love our residency here in Alaska. I love having a garage, but this thing is like a three quarter garage because our washer dryer is recessed in the laundry room. And my workbench here that I made quite a few number of years ago is just like a magnet for crap. Well, that's by no means perfect but I have room to work on something now. This can go down here. All right, that's better. Hey, Travis, Ben from Seward, how are you? Hey, I got, yeah, good news. I did not have to disconnect the coolant lines to get the number, but I have the 25.2325. Critical information that was not on the uh, owner's manual was the model number that we have. $982. All right, and how much uh, is the water pump or the coolant pump for that one? Because I'm thinking of replacing this whole unit and then getting that pump just to have a whole other unit full of spare parts. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. I will call you back here shortly with my decision. I just need to talk to my wife. All right. Thank you. Really appreciate your help. Bye. The problem is that this SPAR unit is probably very old, so I'm not going to fault it being an SPAR. But I'm going to fault it as maybe it wasn't maintained quite as well as it should have been through the course of its life, which very well could be coming up on, since we're the third owners of this vehicle, eight years. And it may not have been exercised routinely, meaning turning it on for a period of time every single month just to keep things moving. That guy Travis said, you know, if you're doing what you told me you're doing, like the Pan American, going to the far reaches of the globe, you might want to carry a bunch of extra spare parts or fix this one, put the water pump on it, get it working again, but use this as a spare for parts and then just order a whole brand new one. So you will have something reliable that will work, but if it does go out, you'll have parts. Now that is an interesting scenario because $245 plus maybe $40 in gaskets, I can get this thing up and running again. But how long is it gonna be up and running? Also, it's pretty much $1,000 for a whole new SPAR unit. You know, just like you guys, money's not growing on trees or falling out of the sky, but man. So yeah, he said, carry spare parts for these things. Like, geez. Do I really want to carry, I'm guessing it weighs about 25 pounds and this extra weight is also a factor in our vehicle. Do I want to have redundancy in, for everything in terms of like spare parts? We have redundancy in heat. So I seriously, I do not know what to do. Coming up in the next video, it's time to fix the pooper and I finally get the heater up and running. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and join the Outliers YouTube community for early video releases, exclusive content, live chats, and so much more. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the road.